Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, except exception as e. This is a fairly common expression used in Python when dealing with exceptions. But the problem is, unlike other parts of the Python language, the readability of this particular syntax is not so good. I remember the time when I first came across this statement except exception as e and it felt like I just heard a spell that does some magic in the background. As my journey went on and my expertise in Python improved, I finally understood what it meant and guess what, it wasn't a difficult concept at all. In this video, let us learn what exactly does it mean and how to wield the power of the syntax in our own Python programs. Excited to get started? Let's begin. Let's start by breaking it down and look at each word individually. So the first word is except. This is just the keyword used to catch any exceptions that has been raised in the try block. Now coming to the second word exception. This is a special one. Let's look at it at the end. So the third word as. This is another keyword in Python used to assign an object to a variable. And the fourth word e is the variable the object is being assigned to. What object you ask? The exception object caught by this except block. So coming back to the second word exception. This is actually the name of a class in Python. That's right, there is a class named exception. Have a look at this exception hierarchy chart. As you can see, we have base exception at the top. On the second level, we have four classes named exception, generator exit, system exit, and keyboard interrupt. Most of the day-to-day -day exceptions that us Python programmers deal with or inherited from the exception class. Hence, when we write this line except exception as e, what we actually mean is that this except block has to catch all the exceptions which are inherited from this class named exception, be it name error, module error, file not found error, or any other class that was built with this class named exception as the superclass. So once the exception object is caught, we store it in this variable named e so that we can access all the attributes of the caught exception. Let's take an example and see what we can do with this object e. As you can see, we have one statement in try block which says x equals y plus 3 and in the except block we just have one statement which says print e on running this code we get the output name y is not defined where did the string come from it came from the exception object e this is not the only information contained in this exception object you can also get the exception type the stack trace etc from this object if you wish to learn more how to do that, we have an entire video dedicated to it, which you can find in the description. Also, one point worth noting is that it is generally considered bad practice to catch multiple exceptions like this with a single except block. This in a way says that you as a programmer has no idea what kind of error can occur in the try block and you just want to sweep things under the rug by capturing all the errors using a single except block. Let's have a look at another example. Let's say we wish to get a number from the user as an input. We can do that using this particular statement. x equals int of input of please enter your favorite number. Here the input function gets a value from the user and the int function converts this input into an integer and stores that value in the variable x. If we run this code and enter a number, everything runs fine. But if we run this code again, and this time instead of entering a number, we enter some random 
alphabet, let's say, then we get this value error. Now that we know that this particular statement can produce a value error exception, what we must do is we must keep this problematic code inside the try block and we must write an except clause like this, except value error as e. Now if we run it and give it a bad input, instead of getting a value error, we will get something like this. Now, if we change this line except value error as e into except exception as e and run the same code again, we will get the same exact output. But there is a problem with this type of code. The problem is that it doesn't tell the reader of your code what kind of exception are you trying to handle. So when you go fishing, unless you are aiming to capture a whale, don't use a huge net. Use a simple fishing rod instead. Hence, only use this powerful magic spell, except exception as E, for some random experimental code and not on production level code. I hope by now you understood what this except exception as E means and when and where to use it in our programs. There's only so much we can cover in a video. So, if you're still feeling confused, I recommend heading over to our website embeddedinventor.com where we have an entire article dedicated to this topic which includes many more examples and a more thorough explanation. You can find the link in the description. Alright, I will stop here. So hit that like button if you like this video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.